This is the 27th straight season Nebraska plays a football game on Black Friday. They are 19-7 on the day after Thanksgiving. They're facing an Iowa team who we know who their stars are. C.J. Beathard, the quarterback. We know about Desmond King, the fine cornerback. But there's more to the Hawkeyes than just those two players. Here are the seven things to watch for when Nebraska takes on Iowa. Iowa relies on not one, but two backs to carry the load. Akram Wadley, number 25, and LaShawn Daniels, number 29. You know, 29, I mean, he'll, he'll hammer you. 25 has really improved over last year. And between the two, they've gained more than 1,700 yards to go with 17 touchdowns. Beathard's favorite target is Riley McCarron, number 83. He's a former walk-on. He leads the Hawkeyes in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. But he's also the reigning Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week after returning this punt for a touchdown at Illinois. And don't forget about big number 87, Noah Fant. He's the former Omaha South Packer in his freshman season coming off a career-high three receptions against the Illini. Basically holds every record or is tied for every record that counts over at Nebraska. He's had a great career, and I think we'd be uh, foolish not to, not to prepare for him. I was prepared to see Tommy Armstrong. The question is, how healthy will Armstrong be? I'm rested up. Uh, I'm good to go. Just been practicing as much as I can, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Linebacking core is very active, you know, always, always the, the toughest linebackers we play. Those linebackers led by number 43, Josie Jewell. He's a Butkus Award finalist, and he's the leading tackler in the Big Ten with 105 on the season. Up front, look out for big number 67, Jaleel Johnson. Defensive tackle, he's 6'4", 310 pounds, a high school teammate of Jordan Westerkamp. And he leads the Hawkeyes with seven and a half sacks and 10 tackles for loss. Iowa will do what they do no matter what. Remember last year's game when the Hawkeyes offense was going nowhere and just like that, two long touchdown runs by the now graduated Jordan Kanziri to turn the tide of the game. And that's indicative of Iowa's commitment to their game plan. Probably the same play, they scored a touchdown on probably six, seven times. We stopped them for negative yards, no yards, and you know, one of those times it leaks and that's just, that's just who they are. And uh, you know, we just gotta understand that. Turnovers always important, but even more critical in a game between Nebraska and Iowa. The team that wins the turnover battle is 4-0 in the Heroes game. And for a guy like Josh Banderas, it's one last crack at the Hawkeyes. Since I've been here, you know, they've they beat me twice, and I've only beat them once, and I didn't even really play too much in that game, so it would be nice to end, end on an even note. All right, our coverage begins at 10 a.m. A Big Red Zone game day, our one-hour live pregame show inside Kinnick Stadium. And then Big Red Zone insider Sean Callahan of HuskerOnline.com hosts his online chat at noon. That's on KETV.com and the KETV mobile app. Then it's Nebraska and Iowa, 2.30 kick in Iowa City. It's followed by live post-game coverage following the game. Nebraska still has hopes to win the Big Ten West title, but to do that, they have to beat Iowa first and then hope Minnesota wins at Wisconsin. But first up, the Huskers have to beat the Hawkeyes, and they'll get their chance in the Heroes game at 2.30. In Iowa City, Andy Kendi, KETV, Newswatch 7 Sports.